My grandfather's name in Navajo was Akatli, which means cowboy. My grandmother always said, and it means, if it's up to anybody, it's up to you. You might know this guy. His name is Derek McGay. We're pretty unique. We, we have a story. We have a tradition. We have a culture. We have our own language. We have our own beliefs. We're one of a kind. Being a, a Navajo, we learn from our parents, and they learn from their parents. Life teachings, that's what they give us. Our ancestors, our grandfathers, our grandmothers back in the day, they had no education, but they had livestock. That's how they made their living. When I was growing up, you had to survive day to day, and it was really, really hard with our tribe. I grew up without running water, without uh, electricity. There was no TV. There was no games. They just played with what they had outside. Real basic, simple home life. Che in Navajo is our grandfather. This is Grandpa's prayer, this whole thing. Everything about our lives, Grandpa's prayer. Can't have no excuses because I grew up in the reservation. That's the best thing that happened for me. When I got old enough to, to leave the reservation and go out to the real world or the white man world, being a, a different person from a different place. When I was young, when I was trying to pro-rodeo myself, I thought, you know, a Navajo will never do it. It won't happen. I remember people would say stuff about him, like, oh, he's riding a paint horse, and like, ha, ah, look at that Indian kid, and he's just a kid off the reservation. Had a single cab Dodge, just a two-horse side-by-side trailer. Pull up, I could go to all these rodeos, and 98% of the people are different than what I am. I visualize a lot of stuff. Maybe when I'm driving. What I love about going down the road. <laughs> Look at this. I feel like a like an eagle in the sky. <laughs> Free. Natives, they're real, they're real high on rodeo. They love every bit about it. The first time I went to the NFR in Las Vegas, we, we went there just to go watch. And there's this one guy, he's like, hey, you guys wanna watch the rodeo? And he's like, well, I got two tickets here. My dad gave him his 200, which we had to go home on. So we were excited, heck. Rodeo was getting closer to the start. I mean, we were just a few minutes away. You got this couple come down like, excuse me, those are our seats. 
and here I guess we had fake tickets. The whole moment of trying to watch it, I was suddenly like, nope, you guys gotta leave. We had a room at the, uh, uh, the Motel 6. We walked all the way back over there and we watched in the room. Well, he was a crazy Indian reaching on a slow paint, just throwing as fast as you could. Oh, man. Derek Begay, a new arena record. It doesn't take long to watch Derek Begay and realize the talent he's got in five fingers and a 32-foot lariat rope. We've seen him in Reno, Pendleton, Salinas, San Antonio, Houston. He's been there. He's done that. The list goes on and on. Derek Begay is a badass cowboy. First Navajo ever to qualify to the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo in Las Vegas. He's been there seven times. There'll be one or two swings that you know this place is going to explode. The first time you ever go there to watch the NFR, it's just like crazy energy and the lights are going, the everything. And you walk in there, it has a smell that I can't explain, but I know what it is. Money, fame, fortune, or whatever that smell is, it had, I had it in there. That's the moment that you know that you made it. For me anyway, is getting to run into that building and make a lap. And then as soon as you get out of there, that's when the a different kind of nerves coming, like, oh shoot, here we go, we're fixing that to, to try to catch the steer. I think it's pretty awesome about Derek is that he has led the way for the other Navajo cowboys to, to feel like they're good enough, they can come out here and compete as well. You'll see kids, you know, playing in the background and at a rodeo or at home with the rope saying, you know, I'm Derek Begay. He's it to the Navajo Nation. You know, when they, you say Derek Begay, they all know who he is. He's their hero. Because I've watched him rope stuff, and I mean, just like, how in the heck did he make that work? You know, he grew up in a, in a harsh country because everything that's out there will either poke you, sting you, hurt you, cut you. It's taught him a lot of things. And I can't think of a better guy on the reservation to be famous than Derek Begay. Hell. I'd be happy if my kid grew up to be like him. He goes everywhere. And then he comes home, and people want to take his picture. They're so starstruck. It's Derek McGee. He's not mean, not cranky. He don't beat on his horses. He's a role model. He don't even know it. Where we're from, he put on the map. He's just a simple brez boy out in the bullheads and sand and wind. He was the first one to just go outside a big ocean and just uh, fight with the big guys, and uh, he proved he could make it. Well, to me, he's a great American cowboy. They don't see the struggle, and they don't see the hardship. They don't see where we came from. They see him as almost like a superhero, and to me, he's just a brother. Like that right there is called Nijone. That means beautiful or pretty. Nijone. My, my granddad, my dad's dad, he was, he was a cowboy. You would not see any of this. It would just be all dirt and tumbleweeds if all five of us, my mom, my dad, my brother, and my sister, didn't listen to anything my grandfather said. If we didn't take his prayers and create a life with it, you wouldn't see any of this. Everybody thought I was the first Navajo that was going to go to the national finals, but I kind of just played around with it. You know, if I would have kind of took it a little bit more serious, I would have got somewhere with it. I'm a very proud father, Derek, because, you know, it's, it's just who he is. You know, he's just such a great, humble kid. I hope one day the whole thing turns around and we end up with a lot of good Navajo kids. Those buckles and those world championships and all those, all those other stuff, it, it's just, 
It's a memory that you had and you're sure glad you've done it and you know that you've done what you wanted to do your whole life. But when it comes to legacy, someday I want somebody to say, hey, that was a good dude. That guy was a good guy. That was it. 